Yeah, so my name is uh, Jörg Schüttrumpf. I'm a chief scientific innovation officer at Griffiths and uh, as such responsible for the uh, developing the uh, Griffiths pipeline and of course also about the uh, medical and scientific uh, topics all over the uh, product portfolio. So um, to give you a little bit of background about myself, I'm a physician myself. I, um, uh, after studying medicine, I started uh, to work on uh, gene therapy uh, and mainly also for rare diseases, uh, coagulation diseases like hemophilia. And uh, then I went on with my uh, clinical career uh, uh, in, uh, in scientific education in the US and also in Germany. And at, at some point I was working in the field of gene and cell therapies and uh, wanted to move things into clinics and uh, seeing how difficult this can be from an academic side, I uh, said, okay, I will try uh, industry. And this is how I, I came to the, to the pharma industry. And um, uh, so actually my first program that I was working on was also in the rare uh, disease space in hemophilia. And uh, very soon I got uh, more and more res uh, responsibilities. Uh, uh, and at some point I was a, a chief scientific officer at Biotest and Biotest uh, then got as a major shareholder Griffiths. Both companies work uh, in the plasma therapeutic space. So also Griffiths is main provider of um, plasma-based uh, therapeutics. And uh, the interesting thing is now uh, to develop this further and uh, bringing also other therapeutic options and uh, other kinds of therapy and innovation to the medical uh, sector and for, for patients at the end. And so uh, let's say also uh, the, the portfolio that we uh, have as a company uh, are a lot of uh, the, uh, the the medicines that we provide are in the rare uh, rare disease uh, space. Uh, I mentioned already hemophilia, but also like uh, in primary immune deficiencies, of course, alpha one antitrypsin deficiencies. Uh, so uh, there there are a lot of inherited rare diseases. There are other rare diseases, and of course, there's a big need to um, yeah, to serve these patients. And I think that's also a very special thing that we do is uh, having a lot of donors uh, who are willing uh, to donate their plasma so that we can uh, then extract uh, the proteins out of this, making uh, medicines, plasma-derived medicines for patients um, that really need it and where their life depend on these drugs. So alpha-1 uh, deficiency is a, a, a genetic disease. It's a, a mutation in, uh, in a gene that causes a deficiency, uh, the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And um, actually the um, uh, alpha-1, what it does is really it blocks uh, enzymes. And uh, this is very important because uh, these enzymes uh, co cause, uh, can cause inflammation and uh, especially in an inflammation setting, then uh, these enzymes are released and can cause um, uh, tissue damage. And so the alpha-1 basically protects the own tissue from uh, being attacked by uh, these uh, different enzymes. And uh, that's also the interesting thing in alpha-1 deficiency because uh, the um, uh, deficiency, of course, since it's a genetic disease, is there the whole life. So these patients need treatment all over their, their lifespan. 
However, they often don't notice the disease until they already have some problems. And this we see especially in the lung, because the lung is a tissue uh, where this destruction occurs uh, very soon. And then you have um, uh, 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 symptoms in the lung that the respiratory functions are not working as good as uh, before. And um, so uh, it's basically the then the therapy to preserve the lung function over the lifetime of the patient. Yeah, the problem diagnosing is that often when you diagnose it, it's already uh, too late, yeah, because all, already the disease led to organ damage and uh, lung function uh, damage that you will see uh, uh, that, that has occurred already. And uh, therefore, it's important uh, when there's an, uh, um, uh, le let's say you have a, uh, the suspicion of a, a chronic um, pulmonary disease that you test also for this uh, a kind of genetic deficiency uh, of alpha-1 to detect the disease. That's, uh, uh, the, that's a great uh, problem. And per perhaps to explain this a little bit better, it's not so easy to differentiate this kind of rare genetic disease with other more common uh, lung diseases. And therefore, it's important really to have this genetic test at some point to say, okay, uh, we, we also as, as a medical community have to think of these rare diseases, although very often it's not the cause for a disease. So after diagnosing the patient, the patients uh, receive regular infusions. These are intravenous infusions with uh, alpha-1. Uh, the uh, drug is given, given uh, as an intravenous solution, and you normally need regular weekly uh, infusions uh, to ma maintain a level that is then protective for the lungs. So <clears throat> Griffiths wants to improve the uh, treatment for patients. And one very important point is that if you think of weekly intravenous infusions, this is really uh, a, a problem for patients because they have to go to uh, to the physician's office, they have to uh, stay there, they have to get an infusion, which uh, takes some time. So our idea is uh, to, and what we are doing is to develop a new uh, treatment option uh, that uh, the drug can be given even subcutaneously. So this would allow the patients to um, uh, to shift from uh, uh, from this infusion setting to a subcutaneous setting, and the subcutaneous injection is also the advantage that most patients can do this themselves, so uh, opening basically the option for uh, even home treatment for these patients. So uh, at the moment, the trial is a, um, uh, is a, uh, it's a small uh, trial where we started. Uh, in, in the first trial, we uh, basically want to establish the pharmacokinetics of the drug, meaning um, we have uh, the patients uh, which are injected uh, with a, um, uh, subcutaneously, and we compare the levels uh, we can reach after one injection. This is the first part of the trial, which is now finalized. And now we move into the second part of the trial, in which uh, uh, we also have multiple dosing of this to see uh, uh, after establishing in the first part how much of the drug we have to give to see that we can maintain uh, levels also uh, for um, uh, over a longer period of time. And this basically is then the uh, base to say, okay, on this, we, we have uh, the dosing and uh, we also have the schedule established to move forward to show efficacy in, in one of the, or in the following trial. So the next steps, of course, uh, would be after having established then uh, the dosing, 
and also a kind of a treatment scheme for the patients. We then move on uh, and uh, want to show uh, also uh, the efficacy, so uh, that really the drug has uh, an influence uh, on how the disease can develop. Uh, this would be the next step. And of course, the goal is uh, to um, bring it soon to patients so that we uh, uh, that patients have the option to treat themselves by subcutaneous infect in injection. Thank you.